Oh. Okay. Hello and here. welcome to uh, another Wednesday webinar. Uh, we are here with uh, the fantastic Laurie Taylor, who's going to tell us about um, Make Votes Matter, a uh, long-term campaigner, I believe, for um, uh, for for Make Votes Matter. And uh, I believe they've got some uh, worked out some very clear strategies of how we make this happen. We talk a lot in our movement about system change. What is that system change? How do we make that system change happen? And proportional representation is some system change. So, Laurie, thank you very much for coming. Uh, over to you. Mm, thank you, um, Phoenix. Um, I, actually, I'm not very techno, so um, I won't be dealing with the chat box. So if we can save any questions to the end, I, I, I can't look at the chat box as well. Um, cool. Yeah. So I'm going to talk a bit about myself, my history with PR, and then about Make First Matter, the structure and how it works in local groups. Then I'll run through um, a few of the things that are wrong with our present FBTP, that's first past the post voting system, and then describe what a difference uh, PR would make. Uh, then we can have um, questions at the end. It might, you might have half an hour of me. I, I generally, I'm keeping them to time here. I, I generally can carry on and on and on quite a bit. So I better, I better make sure I stick to time, I think. That's good. Okay. Um, Give as much as you want. That's all good. Okay. Well, well, yeah, well questions are often the most interesting bit of the lot, actually. Um, okay. So, a bit about me. Uh, I've actually been. I, I, I pitched up in Somerset in 1975 into a safe Tory seat, and I've been in a safe Tory seat since then. So about 50 years. Uh, I don't vote Tory. Um, so my vote has been completely and utterly pointless and wasted. And I always vote because I think I should do. But it's been absolutely pointless in that time. And but Make Those Matters is a cross-party organisation. So the um, the the same things happened in safe Labour seats. If you're a Conservative in a safe Labour seat, the same thing the same thing actually happens. OK, yep, yeah, we've got... Um, I'm off of... Uh, I just put spotlight on, so it mainly focuses. Oh, OK, sure, 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 sure. Yep, yeah, fine. Um, yeah, uh, and... In in uh, that, when I realised uh, then in the in the mid seventies that uh, I sort of got to grips with the voting system, I thought, hey, this is crazy, it doesn't work, and I found out a bit more about it, and I I ended up with this um, document, the the report for the Hansard Society Commission on Electoral Reform, nineteen seventy six. Now you're all going to say, God, that's that's fifty years out of date, but it's more relevant today than it was then, actually. Um, because of various reasons, because of the thing they were looking at was the minority, uh, my, a government with a minority of the vote and a multi-party system, and it's and it's the, those um, uh, those criteria are, are even exacerbated even more now. So I got hold of that in about the late eighties, no, sorry, late seventies, and how do I, I often stop and think how do I do it before googling and stuff? But I did, I got hold of that. And uh, I've also got it online as well. And I read it and uh, I thought, well, this is terrific because the, the, it's also called the Blake Report. And it, it, um, it was a couple of Lords, a couple of MPs, um, whatever, uh, a, um, someone from the charitable sector, a trade unionist and, and some great and goods. Uh, and it came down completely and utterly 100% in favour of changing to proportional representation. It's, an, it's a magnificent document. I read it about every 10 years just to reassure myself. And yes, it's 50 years out of date nearly, but it's much more relevant today than it was then. Um, yeah, so I, I looked at it and thought, oh, this is great. Then um, my political education was starting. I thought, oh, that's good. We're going to change to proportional representation sometime pretty soon. And uh, of course, then my political naivety cut in and it was absolutely forgotten about. The red, blue duopoly, Labour, Tory duopoly at the time, can't be bothered, um, under the carpet it goes and basically it's got lost lost from history and not many people know about it. But I think it's a real good document still there. Um, yeah. And, and since then, I've, you know, realised that, hey, nobody's really, since the late 70s, nobody's really talking about uh, changing voting systems, the duopoly had it all tied up. Um, I I was into marriage, children, too much work, you know, all that stuff. So I didn't bother. I used to blah, blah, blah about it now and again. And um, that's that's really all good. Anyway, semi, fast forward to semi-retirement in um, Christmas uh, 2017. And uh, I was aware that Make Votes Matter started. Let's segue into what Make Votes Matter is all about. 
Um, Making Boats Matter had started then, and I got together with a friend in town, and we thought, hey, next year in 18, and so just over six years ago, we started a Make Votes Matter group. So Make Votes Matter started um, in 2015 after the uh, general election in 2015, which came up with some <clears throat> staggering disproportional results. Um, those of you who might remember, David Cameron got in with, what was he got, 50... 37% of the vote, 37% of the vote, 51% of the seats, and, 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 and scraped into an overall majority. And there were <clears throat> hugely disproportional results. 25% of the entire vote ended up as 1.5% of the seats in Parliament. <clears throat> Disgraceful. And um, that's when maybe some people got together and started the organisation. I became aware of it and thought, while well, I've got breath in my body in my retirement, I'm going to do what I can, because we must, must change from this, as I call it, uh, primitive, dysfunctional and dangerous voting system, first past the post. <clears throat> so we started a local group. The thing that drew me to Make Votes Matter was the um, single real focus on uh, only focus, only one campaign focus, which is to change the voting system for the House of Commons to a proportional representation nothing else at all and i thought blimey that's good i like focuses like that i i don't like being being spread around the place i don't do that very well the um that and they had three three sort of tiers of what they were doing again which is really good and they had a process to how to get to proportional representation which previously there's been no process people say oh we need proportional representation and then you wake up next day and we need proportion, but nothing happens. So Make Votes Matter had uh, a really serious process um, and they were a three-stage process, which the, there was the Alliance, which is the, um, maybe Linda needs to turn her thing on mute. Or we can yeah, on mute. I'm just going to do that on mute, Linda. Yep, okay, done. great. Um, <clears throat> so the, the, first, the first raft of Make Votes Matter was um, sort of high profile people and organisations to get together to form an alliance. And there's been regular alliance meetings every, until now, for various reasons, it stopped every every quarter of the year. I, I was up in the House of Commons for several of them back along. And then the second stage, the second strand was the Labour Party. Let's come back to that in a minute. And then the last one was the likes of me and my group here, my Totnes, um, Totnes um, Make Vers Matter group, which I, again, started over six years ago. <clears throat> And our aim is to get out there and raise awareness, do things like this. I do a lot of talking for Make Votes Matter. I haven't done one on Zoom for a long, long time, and um, most of it's in person these days. So raising awareness, because out in the streets, I mean, I know that people have no idea generally. People have very little idea. Um, probably exceptions here because you're all sort of thinking about this stuff. But um, people don't really understand how first past the post works, quite honestly. And the the whole notion of changing to something else is is like they don't understand it. So raising awareness is really really important. Um, on that note, I'd just like to say here that uh, the some of you remember the twenty eleven referendum on voting reform. It was called the AV referendum. And one thing I'd just really like to kick out the way here is that one. People think, oh well, we did that in twenty eleven with that referendum, didn't we? Um, <clears throat> no, we didn't. No, we didn't. Uh, the 2011 referendum wasn't had nothing to do with proportional representation. The uh, AV is not a proportional voting system. The whole thing was about Nick Clegg becoming deputy prime minister. And Nick Clegg sold out the Lib Dem promise of PR and just adopted that. So, yeah, right. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so 2011 referendum, when people refer to it, it had nothing to do with proportional representation. Right, let's move on. I mean, PR is is not a panacea in itself. There is no perfect voting system. There's only some that are real crap, like first past the post, and there's some that are much better, like proportional representation. There is no perfect voting system. There, there cannot be a perfect voting system. Uh, you know, let's go sideways here. I mean, I like... There's, there's a guy called... I mean, I like definitions of things. and We all talk about democracy and what is democracy and, and, and how we do it. Um, but what is a democratic government? Um, the 
there's a guy called Ernest Naval, who was a 19th century um, philosopher and theologian, who said, in a de democratic government, the right of decision belongs to the majority, but the right of representation belongs to all. The right of decision belongs to the majority, the right of representation belongs to all. And I like, I like that. I mean, yes, it is just someone's definition, but it really fits with me so that, you know, the majority makes a decision and everyone should be re represented. First past the post doesn't, doesn't fit that at all, whereas proportional representation does. <clears throat> and to change to PR is it's a foot in the door uh, that will enable um, much better governance of the country with outcomes based on fairness equality, consensus, uh, cooperation and compromise. I mean, I suppose I like to think of it as, as, as grown-up politics, actually. I believe, and I've believed this for nearly 50 years now, that PR is the single most important change to British politics that we can make. The single most important one. I suppose I, I, I realised it 50 odd years ago, but I, now I, I, it's so crucial it's not true. Um, and PR is any voting system in which seats match uh, the, the number of votes and all votes count more or less equally. So if a, if a, um, someone get, a party gets 20% of the votes, they get 20% of the seats in Parliament. Very straightforward. And it, to me, it's about better politics, better democracy and a better society. <clears throat> right. What's wrong with first past the post? Well, the first thing to understand, which is, again, on the streets, we find this. It, it is not, we don't have a general election. We have 650 specific elections. It's very important to realise, to understand that your vote is of only any consequence in your constituency. It, it goes nowhere else. It counts nowhere else. So if you're in a safe seat, um, <clears throat> safe Tory or Labour seat, uh, your vote, which isn't Tory or Labour, is actually effectively pointless. It really is. Um, first past the post leads to confrontational, think of PMQs for God's sake, adversarial, short-sighted politics, mostly dominated by the right. Uh, since the war, it's been about two thirds right and a third left. And since the Labour Party started, what's that, 124 years ago, it's been about 75% to the right. <clears throat> I mean, in this, uh, in this adversarial sort of uh, equality, each lot, whether it's Labour or Tory, they each try and undo each other's stuff, you know, stuff being ideological impl implementation. So the Labour Party in, get in, they do sort of lefties type stuff. They go a bit too far, too far to the left, perhaps. And then, you know, the, 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 the blue lot get in and then they undo the Labour lot. And, then the, you know, and so we go backwards and forwards. It's, it's crazy, crazy. Um, and you can see the craziness coming up in what's about to happen, probably the next generation. <clears throat> I mean, so much stuff will get kicked. No, and it costs a lot of money, this does. It? And there, amongst all this, not, there's not much long term thinking or planning because it's all about uh, it's all about the next five years and getting reelected. Um, and, you know, we ought to be <laughs> we need to plan for longer than that. More than half the seats are safe seats in the country. I mean, that's probably going to take a bit of a knock in this next general election, I think, if you believe the pollsters. Um, <clears throat> and there's both Labour and there's Tory safe seats. Um, Totnes, where I am, which is now called South Devon, has been a Tory safe seat for 100 years. Um, it's likely to change, perhaps. So, like I say, I always vote, but it's absolutely pointless. I, I, I got a postal vote decades ago because I can't be bothered to go to the polling station to waste my time putting a cross against on a, on a bit of paper, which is absolutely pointless. You know? So I don't do it. You know? I vote because I think as I should do, it, it seems to me to be honouring those um, people who have campaigned and think of Peterloo and... Uh, Peterloo massacre, people who died, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> people who died and were, well, it's a huge bloodshed there uh, in 1819, August 1819, campaigning for the vote. And then the Chartists in the mid 1800s for 20 odd years, um, and the suffragettes, of course, the Chartists were, what were they, deported to Australia or something, imprisoned. The suffragettes suffered, of course. And if you look at the, look at the Make Votes Matters colours, they are the suffragettes colours. Uh, because the deed isn't finished, we might have 
um, you know, general enfranchisement of the population above 18, for those who are registered to vote, but we still haven't got fair votes. And that's what we, you know, we need to do. So the, the parties get, carrying on with the downside to first past the post. Uh, all efforts are put into the, the marginals. And that's about, again, has been, things are changing rapidly. But historically, it's been about 100, 140 marginals decide the outcome of the general election. So the other sort of, you know, 500 uh, constituencies in the country, there are 650, of course. They, um, they tend not to get bothered about too much because they've always been a known, a known thing. Um, another side of first past the post, the downside, about 30% is reckoned, it's difficult to know, 30, 33% of votes are tactical. People voting for people who they don't, they don't want to vote. Um, and people feel as though they can't actually vote legitimately. <clears throat> There's loads of crazy statistics around the first past the post. I've talked about the 2015 general election. 25% of the vote becoming 1.5% of the seats in Parliament. Um, the, 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 we've had minority, I mean, at the moment, we've got 43.6% of those who voted, voted for the Conservative Party and voted for you know, the Conservative Party to appoint a Prime Minister. So therefore, you know, 56, 7% didn't vote uh, and didn't want the present government there. But with the, the crazy 43.6% 40, of the vote, they got, what was it, 56% of the seats, therefore 100% of the power. Um, and this, is, this has happened all the time since 1935. The last person in number 10 Downing Street with more than 50% of the vote was Stanley Baldwin in 1935. And <clears throat> there's some atrocious, um, you know, 2005, the Labour Party got in with... 35% of the vote and, and, and a huge majority, Tony Blair, that was. Um, so, you know, nearly two thirds of those who voted didn't want the Labour Party, didn't want Tony Blair. And, uh, uh, and it, it's just a shocking, shocking sci fi. It's terrible, you know. That is incredible Again, figures, really, Laurie. That's, that's yeah. incredible you putting that out. Yeah. That's even of, you know, that's of the people who can actually vote or have a vote. There's a lot of people who. Yeah. You know, yeah. don't vote because they don't yeah. have it, you know, for various reasons. Yeah. Registered. 35 percent of those who voted voted for for the the, the, the Labour, <clears throat> Labour Party, and sixty five percent didn't, and the, the Labour Party got a massive majority. Um, and then what was it? Ten years later, in twenty fifteen, again Cameron got thirty seven percent of the the vote, and uh, he only just scraped a majority with that. Um, so sixty three percent didn't want the Tories in in twenty fifteen, and so we go on. Um, I, I tend to like statistics, and I like pulling out statistics. And uh, I used, I used, I discovered this one myself um, because I, I, I like delving around. Go back, Margaret Thatcher, nineteen eighty three. <clears throat> those of you who were around, and this was post Falklands, of course, and she was riding high, Britannia rules the way and everything. And at the eighty three election, remember this figure: forty two point four percent of the vote. Forty two point four percent of the vote she got. Um, then so the majority of people didn't want the Conservative Party or Thatcher. And she got a 144 seat majority in Parliament, a 144 seat majority. That's a majority which you can do anything you like with. And she did do anything she liked with. What year Let's was start, that, Laurie? What year was 19, that? 1983. Okay, after Falklands. Riding high on the Falklands, 42.4% of the vote, 144 seat majority in Parliament. Let's fast forward to 2017 to... Uh, Theresa May, you might remember she went to the, she inherited Cameron's slight majority in, in um, 2015. In 2017, she went to the country to try and increase her majority because she needed to get Brexit stuff through Parliament. She lost her majority just, and then, then it was the DUP. You know? So she, she, it backfired on her. She lost her majority. Thatcher got 42.4% of the vote. Theresa May, when she lost her majority, got 42.3% of the vote, effectively the same. Effectively, I know, I know, crazy, you know, this is, these are the stats that, um, you know, Karen, which, is, which is all bonkers. Um, yeah, and I, I, can, I can quote you more, there's loads of that. Uh, 
Sorry, Laura, have yeah. you got them written down somewhere? It would be great to put this out afterwards and say, look at the crazy figures on our system we currently have, because they're really powerful figures. You put they, they are, they are powerful. The majority I mean, does not want these these governments, and in they come. Yeah, yeah, we well, got it on record. You can pick it off, can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the 2019, like the last general election, again, um, the a million votes across the country got you 27 Conservative MPs. OK, there's more than 27 Conservative. There were about, what, 13 million or something people voting Tory. So for every million votes, you got 27 Conservative MPs. For every million votes, you got 19 Labour MPs. They swap around a bit um, because it's a duopoly, you know. And um, for a million votes, you got three Lib Dem MPs. The Lib Dems are doing badly there because of their coalition with the Tories. For one million votes, actually slightly less than a million votes, we've got one Green MP. So for a million votes, you get 27 Conservative MPs. For a million votes, you get one Green MP. Um, one of the really interesting things there is the, um, is the Scottish National Party actually do really, really well at first past the post in Westminster. And they got, for a million votes, they got 38 MPs in Parliament in Westminster. 27 million votes gets you 27 Conservatives, a million votes gets you 38 um, Scottish Nationalists, SNPs. Okay, so the, the Scottish Nationals do best out of first past the post in Westminster, yet their policy is completely pro PR. You know, they do better. And with proportional representation, they would, they would probably, they would almost certainly lose something around about half their Westminster MPs. Um, but why are they why are they um, pro PR? Because it's basically democratic and it's the right thing to do. Good old SNP. In fact, the the only party in the country now that are are in favour of first past the post is um, is the Tories. The Labour Party uh, at their party conference in September twenty two came up with a conference motion in favour of PR. Uh, and Laurie, of, yes, Helen's got a question. Do you want to take it now? Yeah, let, 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 let's go for it now. Yeah, sure. It's Helen? probably topical. Is it topical for now? Yeah. Yeah, it was topical. For, yeah, it was just topical for now about things like um, boundaries commission and the way that voting in non PR is based on concentrations of voters, and how um, sometimes changes in in boundaries will split a block of votes, and it can swing a seat towards one party or another in a massive way just by drawing a line in a different place and that's why you have millions of votes that get that's why your SNP do so well is because their vote yeah. is concentrated yes yeah absolutely Geographic. Ge geographical yeah absolutely yeah yeah and the Greens that's do really true. badly because it's all spread all over the country yeah and Conservatives do reasonably well because they tend to be rural and southern tend to be and Labour tend to be northern and, and urban, yes, but it's the ge geographical spread. Yeah. So how much of it, I mean, how much of the, actual, I mean, in a, in a first-past-the-post system, couldn't we make it fairer by having a fairer boundaries? No, no, not at all, no. Um, you're you're preempting me a bit, quite honestly. Um, oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, um, it'd be. I'd rather wait for questions oh, to the end, actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, keep going with that, Larry. Come, come, come back. With, <laughs> sorry. Come back with come That's back with all right, Helen. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Sorry, said okay. Yeah, yeah. Come back, Laurie. I, I'm fine. I, I understand your question. Come, come back with it at the end. Jog me at the end. Um, so, with first past the post, parties can uh, can. Uh, can gain votes and lose seats, or they can lose seats and gain votes. We've had two wrong winner elections this, in this country. 1951, Labour got most votes and the Tories got most seats. In 1974, in February 74, which actually stimulated this report there, that one, um, we had a wrong winner election in 1974, uh, where uh, the Tories got the, it was the other way around, Tories got the most votes and Labour got the most seats. It, it's interesting also, just while we're here, let's nip across the Atlantic to America, where, uh, I, I don't know, they've got first past the post. It's a bit of a colonial legacy for us, actually. They've got first past the post, and they have very similar problems, and he moved on a bit from where we are, quite honestly. And in 2016, they've got, they've got first past the post, plus they've got the complication of the Electoral College. Let's not go into that. Um, but in 2016, Hillary Clinton got three million more of the popular vote than 
the person who became president, which was Donald Trump. Um, <clears throat> he didn't he didn't moan about it then, didn't he? Not being president because somebody got more votes than him. Anyway, he wouldn't have done. Um, so there's the wrong winner elections. Um, also, first past the post is more vulnerable to data hijack. If anyone wants to come back on that, I'll sort of deal with that. It's quite Cambridge Analytica, you want to deal with that later? Yeah, let's go with that later. Yeah, uh, well, uh, yeah. So what difference will PR make? Well, by defini definition, it solves uh, most of the problems that I've um, <clears throat> that I've that I've mentioned. Uh, there's no need for a boundary commission. Helen, come back to that. And possibly gerrymandering, uh, gerrymandering. And there's no tactical voting. Tactical voting out the window. You don't need to do it. Uh, you can vote with your heart, not with your head. PR is how are we doing for time. PR is very normal. Um, it's used in. 85% of OECD countries, that's the larger countries, Organisation of Economic Cooperation and Development. <clears throat> it's used in 40 of the 43 European countries, um, Europe being 27 um, e EU members, plus us now and Switzerland and Norway and, and, and. Um, it's used in 40 of 43, and we're including the ex-Soviet blocs and whatever. Um, and the only we we share UK share first past the post. The only other country in Europe which has first past the post is Belarus. Belarus is an authoritarian, repressive dictatorship. That makes forty two. So there's one other outlier there. That's France, which he uses something in between first past the post and um, and proportional representation. So you know it, it's it's all over Europe, and and all the countries use it, um, <clears throat> and and it's used in this country, of course, the assemblies. Um, the mayoral uh, vote just taken place, it's, it's used there as well. With uh, PR, you get a better turnout. Five to eight percent is generally a better turnout. Not as much as you might expect, but when you consider that we first passed the post, so many, so many votes are completely wasted. It's not surprising with PR, you actually get a better turnout. PR can keep a close constituency link, allowing people to vote for candidates and not just for parties. <clears throat> um, with uh, with proportional representation, there's always more female uh, MPs or members of the representatives. Uh, any all countries with more than forty percent of women in the main legislative legislative body have PR, and there's it's difficult to quantify the better outcomes, climate change and COVID. Remember, if we had um, if we had uh, proportional representation. Instead of having one green MP, we'd have probably something like 50 to 65 green MPs immediately. Now then, the green the green lobby is probably the greatest lobby for climate change. So there's there's going to be better um, better outcomes there for sure. Uh, and with PR, there is less polarisation, less inequality, and happier societies. I've got a and, and um, I just I just stated this down. I don't know if any of you know the World Happiness Report in 2023. It sounds a bit trivial, but it's actually very, very good. It's very, very good. Um, worthwhile looking at. World Happiness Report 2023 of over 150 countries. Uh, Finland is top yet again. And the top 10 happiest countries, which I want to be in a happy country, the top 10 all have proportional representation. Um, the UK slipped last year from 17th to 19th. On the same theme, I'm, I'm coming to the end of what I'm going to talk about. Um, on the same theme, that there's a fragile states index as well. Have a look at that one. Fragile states. Oh, someone's got it there. Brilliant. Fragile states index of 179 countries. <clears throat> um, so at the top of the fragile states, there's Yemen, Somalia, Syria, whatever. If you actually invert it, you you get a sort of stable states index because the obviously the least fragile ones at the bottom of the index. So turn it around upside down. So then, if you turn it around, of the top least fragile states the more stable states of that top 11 10 have proportional representation the other one the other one is canada uk is at 29th by the way um there's some other really good thing the Gini um coefficient measurement of uh wealth and income inequality Gini g-i-n-i it's um it's a measurement of wealth and income inequality um of the best 14 in other words those with um, least inequality the top, the best 14 all use proportional representation. UK is 29th and the United States is 33rd. These, these are just facts. They just, they just sort of say something. And the last one here, the VDEM democracy report, that comes from 
the University of Gothenburg in Sweden. Um, and it's about electoral democracy. It's very interesting on the, the VDEM democracy report. The top 10, the top 10 all, all have, are all PR countries. UK is number 20th. Um, there you go. Helen, let's come back to your, that, 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 that's me, let's have some questions. Helen? No, that's all right. I was just, um, <clears throat> you're right. If we had propor proportional representation, we wouldn't need to reform the Boundary Commission quite so urgently. You're right. I, the Boundary Commission, as you know, since the last election, have just done a, a jiggle around. You know, is it gerrymandering? Well, probably not, but, you know, maybe. Um, I I gave evidence, God, it was over three years ago. The Boundary Commission went around the country. I went to the Guildhall in Exeter and gave evidence to them personally about what they were doing. And you don't need a Boundary Commission, quite honestly. They, all they are doing, all they are doing is changing the shape of the problem not altering the problem in any way whatsoever. And I said this to them. I just said, all you're doing is changing the problem. And 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 you guys are just floating around the country, staying in hotels and all, all at the public expenses. It's, it's unnecessary if we have PR. Um, there no, you go. You're right. When you're right, you're right. <laughs> when you're right, you're right. Well, yes, I think I'm right. Uh, uh, oh, Phoenix, you've got a question. Come on. So if, if folks have got a, a, a question or feedback or anything they want to bung in, bung your hand up. There's reactions down the bottom there. Uh, just make Linda again. So just to say a few things there. When I spoke to your colleague, Molly, she said that you had some strategies in place uh, to for different parties to try and persuade them to go for proportional representation. <laughs> um, one of the comments on the climate activism WhatsApp chat, uh, there's about 150 people there. One of the guys was saying, be... I can't make it tonight, but please, 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 can you ask them about what is the strategy to get Labour to adopt proportional representation? I know that at the party conference the other year, there was a motion, I think, by the, you know, the whole floor of the conference, and they passed it by a big, big majority to, to bring in proportional representation. And then where is the democracy in our democratic parties? Because apparently Keith Starmer and the executive said, no, we're not going to, we're going to ignore that. Thank you very much for your democracy. Let's on yeah. with the next thing. So... Can you tell yeah. us about that and any strategy you've got to how do we pressure these well, parties to bring let's in? Go, let's go, the parties let's don't go back, back to Christmas, they say. If they're winning first past the post, why are they going to change the system? Over. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, OK, well, let's go back back in history a bit to um, the beginning of Make Votes Matter. And their, their, their strand, which I didn't flesh out very much, was the Labour Party. They decided that the they had to work on the Labour Party. You've got to work on one, either the red lot or the blue lot. And they decided the Labour Party. And I was part of phone banking around the country, talking to CLPs, constituency Labour Parties. And and they they did a huge amount on this, um, sort of getting, talking to Labour Parties, talking to the unions, totally important, the unions. And the unions are all sliding on board with, with pro-PR, especially after the conference motion a year and a half ago. Um, and so, in my opinion, Make Verse Matter did a huge, huge job on nobbling the Labour Party and getting them on board, which is where they are. Um, so 80% of Labour Party members are in favour of PR. All the CLPs, 90% of the CLPs, constituency Labour Parties, who debated PR, and that was well over 50%, more like 60%, 97% all voted in favour of PR. Um, the, the, the MPs, the Labour MPs themselves are less favourable. I think it's more than 50%. But you remember, this, the safe Labour MPs will likely lose their seats under PR. Some of them will, some of them won't, of course. Probably the majority wouldn't. So, yes, so now we, we have a, 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 a place where the Labour Party is significantly in favour of PR. Why, and I, I suppose I'm getting into a bit of my opinion now, not, not make those matter stuff, and, and I'm quite happy to be disavowed of my opinion, but... Um, <clears throat> Labour Party going into this next election, and they have to win it with first past the post. Of course, it hasn't changed yet. So Keir Starmer is laser focused on winning with first past the post, and it looks as though he's you know he doesn't have to do much because the Tories are tripping themselves up all the time. Um, but if you go back to the AV the AV um, referendum, it's easy to defend the status quo. If Starmer came out with um, pro PR. In the, in the manifesto, pro PR, you know, the Tory party and the right wing press will absolutely bombard it with lies, obfuscation, half truths, uh, fear mongering. They do it very well indeed. 
and um, unfortunately, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people read the white right, right wing, read the right wing press, and um, so you can they will spend a huge amount of time and effort dissing it, um, because with per, with proportional representation, the Tory party lose their power and the right wing press lose their power, and and I know that out there, um, Joe Public, Joe and Joanna Public, the vast majority really don't know what it's all about, which is what I like to do is raise awareness, and hopefully we can all do that, is raise awareness of this issue because the, and they can be persuaded that um, PR is, is the work, the devil's incarnate and it's the, the communists in and whatever they come up with, you know, um, and, and and all that stuff. And it let the it let the right wing in and the tail will wag the dog and, you know, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> um, what I'm hoping to see in the manifesto in due course is something which says we're going to sort out. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to see this. We will sort out democracy in the country. Don't mention PR. Don't don't mention changing the voting system. We'll sort out democracy in this country. <clears throat> and then and, and, and under that umbrella, they can then start to change the, the voting system. But it's really, really, really important. It looks like Labour are going to get in, get in right, with a, probably a massive majority, yes. But they, the pressure then that we must all bring to bear on the Labour Party and raise awareness everywhere is about changing the voting system. Because if they don't, I mean, they will try and get away with it and do it in the second term, if they get a second term. And if they don't, it'll be disastrous. You know? So I'm not surprised that they're not, they're not blabbing about it too much. It doesn't surprise me at all because... It will get dissed massively, and the general run of the population. So I'm just going to read this: the general run of the population really don't know, don't know, and they will receive all this stuff from the government, from the right wing press, and think, "Oh well, we don't want something nasty like that, do we?" That's my view. So I think um, there's a couple of questions there in the chat from Kez and Helen, if they want to ask that, and I think Dinah's popped her hand up. Kez, do you want to go with your question? Hi, yes, Laurie. Um, great presentation. Thank you. Um, okay, one question is, is if does PR risk creating an unstable government by having too many small groups represented? <clears throat> um, the <laughs> well, the first thing is how what's the stability been like in the last ten years? You know, hey, or fourteen years or whatever it is. You know, um, it's been a mess, isn't it? Um, does it risk un being unstable because of um, a, 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 a plethora of groups? We would end up with a coalition inevitably. You know, um, there's been a really interesting study, and it's called by Dylan Difford, who's a political analyst. Dylan Difford, D Y L A N Difford is D Y W F O R D, and he's he's just fairly recently done something called Strong and Stable. Uh, a paper called Strong, and the word strong there and the word stable is sort of crumbling away a bit. And it's an analysis of the stability of um, countries with PR and, and countries like our own with First Past the Post. <clears throat> and it is very clear from his analysis that actually PR countries are more stable. When you think of particularly about longer term planning, um, uh, you know, work, working towards the future, Coalitions tend to work together. Um, the, the the usually with uh, PR there is a threshold about someone's got to get more than four percent of the vote, four four five percent three percent of the vote to get actually in Parliament. So the evidence out there, as far as uh, I'm I'm absolutely convinced, PR is more stable. It then it leads to more stability in government and and less extremes. You know, we got an extreme at the moment, haven't we? I hope that answers the question. Do look at Dylan Difford's, Dylan Difford's bit, Strong and Stable. Very interesting. OK. If someone can find a link for that Strong and Stable, that would be good. Um, Helen, do you want to ask yours? And then Dinah. Sorry, they hopped in first on the chat, Dinah. Helen? Yes, yeah, sorry. My my question was about... Um, I guess it depends on what proportional representation when you're talking about advocating for proportional representation because my understanding in terms of having voting for a local representative to go to Westminster is that you would under proportional representation you would have this kind of 
like a regional, I don't know, you'd have one MP that was, re- oh, how would you, hmm. how would you keep both? I mean, would it be a hybrid kind of system that you're advocating where you could also elect yeah. a representative? Or yes, yes. It's not um, random. My question was about, you know, so candidates who are in safe seats at the moment, they're the ones that the party really wants to be in cabinet if they win. And so that's why they have those safe seats generally, most of the time. Yeah, okay. So your question is really about Made Voice Matters um, uh, policy about I think you're talking about what type of proportional representation are you? Is that the essence of it? I what type of peer? Yeah. Remember, as a country, we don't we we don't have to take something off the shelf and say we're going to use this. Um, <clears throat> we can we can sort of their own. There are basically only two systems that we will use here. There are three possible systems. One is um, party list system. I, I can go into these a bit, but we wouldn't actually lo- use that one. The two that we would likely to use will be single transferable vote, STV, and uh, the additional member system. It's sometimes called mixed member proportional MMP. So there are two systems there. Both of them have a keep a local representative. It's a bit different to what it is now, but both of them have your MP in parliament who is your representative. I mean, I personally, they, 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 they talk about you know, PR system, then you don't have your, your you know, the, the MP constituency link. I don't care about the MP constituency link myself. I think it's just a bit of fear mongering or obfuscation. I don't care about it. But a lot of people do. And I understand that one completely. So we will go for single transferable vote or the additional member system. Um, and what is it? Can you just do a really brief? Yep. OK. Is yep. It I've not heard of it before. No. OK. Um, <laughs> this is where things start to get complicated. So I've got to keep this simple. Um, the additional <laughs> member, the additional member system, is the one we gave to Germany in 1945-46 to promote stability. We gave it to Germany after the war, and they've still got it, and they love it. You know. Um, <clears throat> so what would happen? Um, yes, yeah, so and take a, take a while. We got a while. Okay, and, and it's really important that people understand what it is. Think of Cornwall. Think of Cornwall. It's down the bottom on the left. People can understand Cornwall because they can see it. It sticks out. Um, Cornwall at the moment is six parliamentary constituencies. The, Cornwall returns six MPs. Again, they are they are six separate constituencies. It returns six MPs to Parliament at a general election. <clears throat> uh, the last two, the last general election, there was 52% of the vote for Tory. The one before that, it was 48% of the vote. So 50% of those people who voted in Cornwall voted Conservative. So 50% didn't. And Conservative over the last two general elections have, have returned 100% Tory MPs. The Tory, the six constituencies in Parliament are all Tory MPs, um, even though 50% didn't vote for them. You know, that's, so is this a right? Well, it doesn't seem to me to be all right. Let's, let's, let's impose the additional member system on Cornwall, shall we? Um, so what it, and it's, it starts to get a bit complicated, but it isn't really. Um, so Cornwall, instead of having six constituents, constituencies, we'll have four. So that means we've reduced the number of, um, assuming Westminster uh, House of Parliament stays the same at 650, we've reduced the number of MPs now from 650 to 433, roughly, um, other than half an MP. So um, the, the constituencies in Cornwall are, are half as much bigger. So there are four constituencies in Cornwall. So you will go to the ballot box in Cornwall and you will vote. You will have two pieces of paper, one exactly the same as you have at the moment with first past the post. So you will vote for your constituency MP in a 50 percent big A constituency. Yes. Your other bit of the paper will be um, your party vote. So Mm. you will you will select your party. Whatever that might be, you know, one, one you'll mark a cross against the party. So typically in Cornwall at the moment, um, with single transferable vote, let's say you're a green voter in Cornwall. So you will go to the polling station and uh, you won't vote green because you know it's a waste of time. Um, <clears throat> you probably will tactical vote, tactically vote. So you'll probably vote for Lib Dem is the tactical vote generally in Cornwall. But on your party thing, you will vote green as your party. 
so. Um, the 400 and, um, how say, 33 MPs are returned by first past the post. And then the your your party nomination is dealt with nationally and tops up the MPs to to provide proportionality of people. So okay. look at the London look at London elections last yeah, year. 11 percent yeah. 11%, 11%, 11% voted oh. green under AMS, right? Eleven percent voted green. Um and so probably let's let's say across the country, you know, at, at, at a at a um <clears throat> additional member system election, there's one Caroline Lucas or something or other or Bristol Central, the green green MP. Um but because they have done so badly out of the first past the post element, they will have a huge top up on from the list MPs. The other lot are called the list MPs. That's 217, isn't it now? Something like that. <clears throat> and yeah. so if 10 percent of people across the country um, vote, mark their party as green, the, the first past the post element gets the one MP, but they should have 10 percent of the MPs they will get 10% of 65, they'll get another 64, 65 minus one MPs. Um, so they will immediately you end up with 65 um, green MPs in Parliament, assuming 10% of the population vote green. I hope that makes sense. I, I, that, that, uh, that's one, yeah, that's one. You're right. Okay. It, it math, mathematically, it sounds complicated, but I think yeah, it's, it's not. It's, not. it's, it's, what, it's what you... It's what you, the voter, get at the ballot box, which is mm. important to understand. OK, so with single transferable vote, let's stay with Cornwall. Cornwall becomes one constituency, one multi-member constituency. Mm. And the people go to the ballot box in Cornwall and they, they probably have quite a long ballot sheet, just one. Yeah. Uh, it could be a dozen, 15 candidates there. <clears throat> and you simply mark them in order of your preference. So... Um, if you're Lib Dem, you start with the Lib Dems and then you mark them. You can mark one person or you can mark the whole 15. Doesn't matter, whatever you do. I, in I your preference. And I kind of understand it yeah. because I've used okay. it. Yeah. But... So then then the that that whole how the people vote there is then reflected. So let's go back yeah. to the last general election when 50% voted Tory, 50% didn't. So at the last general election, using single transfer of a vote in a multi-member constituency with six MPs going to Parliament, um, so 50% vote Tory, and three three of the MPs go up to Westminster. The other three then are divvied up by how other people voted. So it could be one Lib Dem, one Labour, one Green, it might be two Lib Dems, one Labour, it depends how people vote. Um, that's, that's how that works. So in the multi-member constituency, you know, you do have access to um, a... Um, an MP of your colour, if you like, you might you might be in Penzance and you have to go to Truro, but with the benefits of Zoom and emails and all the rest of it, you don't need to travel necessarily all the time. It, it makes it fairer when people feel that it is going to make a difference that one of their votes is going to count to actually elect someone. Like the example you gave of Totnes, where you know it's a, your vote was never going to count because it's been blue no. for hundred years. I think Diane has <laughs> been waiting patiently there. With oh. Question and think deeply. So over to Diana in Sunny Lewis. Uh, lovely to see Lewis Climate Hub beaming in. Hey, go for it, Lewis. Uh, Diana, nice to see you. To unmute. Just unmute. Hi. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. I was really glad to hear you mention Germany because it's really interesting that the British went to Germany after the war and rigged up this system that's been extremely effective but never chose to adopt it themselves because whoever wins has ultimate power now what you said about labor getting in you said if labor gets in and personally i believe that if labor gets in they will get in in a hung parliament which is the result that i really want because i hate one party monopoly and if it's a hung parliament with lib dems and greens and maybe some independents they will have to talk and be polite to each other well maybe not because we don't have any legal structure to make them be polite it's a bear garden but they will have to talk and find some common ground which is what we want because that will lead to a consensual 
load of measures that will be supported by most people because it's reasonable and it's not an extreme view left or right. However, I can't see any way once they get in of making them go for PR unless it's a hung parliament enough with the Greens and the Lib Dems who've always sworn allegiance to PR, unless they make it a condition of being in government that Labour acts on its 80% trade union vote of PR to activate it. But that won't be enough because we also need a constitution not this gentleman's legal shit, and a Bill of Rights, which we've never had. I live in Lewis, where the Tom Paine's uh, Bill of Rights written on the ceiling of the local pub. <laughs> we need a Bill of Rights. We need a constitution. And I understand that Make Votes Matter is a single issue. And I think that's good because we're all so confused by politics. I don't think it's any accident that nobody understands what the hell is going on in British politics because it makes it really easy to flim flam and, and control us but we really need it to be clear and simple and we need root and branch reform of the electoral system all these stupid lords all these silver service meals cheaper than the food banks it's just so shocking and you know Maria Caulfield here was awarded seven and a half grand a severance pay, and she took the job back after two months. There's just so much wrong with it, in other words. Yeah, it's yeah. totally <clears throat> rotten. It's just the same as in Poldark. And it was designed as a feudal system where they just meted out a few little bits of power when they had to. It was never designed for million people participation. It's not fit for purpose. And I understand that You've got to have one movement to get PR through, but it has to be joined up with the bigger stuff because otherwise we get PR and that will be it. It has to have, you know, has to be joined to a whole electoral reform package. I mean, you're doing Can the I job. Just... Yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, Diana. Just come back there and then pass over to Laurie just for, just just to say a couple of bits. That that Diana's absolutely smashed it out of the park there. This really is. We need to have whole system thinking. We have a this so-called unwritten constitution that they keep making up at different times. We need a bill of rights. They remove so many of our rights at the same time. We need to reform and change the whole, we need the whole system to change. So how do we do that? PR is part of that, but like Diana says, it needs to be a whole package and you know, we really like to work with Make Votes Matter and get as many groups behind as possible. But it's the thin end of a wedge that we need for real system change on many levels to reform our whole political system. Why can't we have more people's assemblies, community assemblies, all these different centres and public parks where we have the technology now to, I think I put something in on one of the chats earlier, we could be having community assemblies through many different centres, places and parks that feeds in on certain things. Why haven't we got a, a, a house of real people's commons that feeds into these things? You know, we have a very anachronistic old system that like Poldark, they've given us little bits okay. of power slowly, slowly, slowly. Um, you know, uh, one little fact, last one here, the Levellers originally called for all women to have the vote as well as all men back in 1649. And then um, they dropped it because it was too radical. And at the end of the Civil War, they had a meeting uh, the Putney debates, and they agreed that all men over a certain age would have the vote. Cromwell came in the next day and said, no, nope, you're not going to have all men having the vote. This would be anarchy. How do we change this system that only gives tiny bits of power slowly away? We, you know, how do we get a strategy together? So make folks matter strategy there. And so anything from Dine or anything anyone said there, but we really want to help and support makes folks matter. But how do we change the whole system and how do we get Labour focused on to change this? was one of the big questions from someone outside the meeting. Over. Thank you so much, Laurie. You banged it. Really loads of good... Of course, there's, there's loads of stuff there. Um, uh, I, I agree with everything you're saying. Um, the changing, to me, changing the voting system, you know, to, to yes, we must change the laws, the Constitution, Bill of Rights, oh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely, you know. And, and I understand what you're saying, Diana. I mean, my hope back along was that uh, Labour will get in, but without an overall majority. And they would inevitably have to do a coalition with 
it will be only one party, another party. It'd be, it'd be the Lib Dems, typically, could be the SNP. But it would only be one person. I mean, first past the post does coalitions very badly because you have a big party and you have a little tiny party. Think the Tories and think DUP. PR does very good coalitions because you have two or maybe three parties of an equal quality. Look at look at Germany, traffic like um, traffic like coalition. They are three substantial, including the Greens. There, they're substantial parties. Um, so I was hoping that, um, but it's looking as though you, you're right. I mean, it's not going to be a it's not going to be a, a coalition government um, with with Labour and somebody else. It's not going to be that way. Just just as a, a nice point, I I never use hung parliament. I never use the expression. Rishi Sunak comes out with hung, about being a hung parliament. I don't know what planet he's on, but there he is. Um, um, and because it's just that visualisation of um, somebody being throttled at the end of the rope and helpless and dying, and all, it's, it's just it's unhelpful. I never use it, and I always pick people up on it. Sorry about that. Because a coalition, as you were saying, is about collaboration, compromise, cooperation, consensus. It's about let's all work together and be grown ups and 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 do this properly you know but i i i'm i'm really think that to move anything we we simply have to change it's not a panacea we have to change the voting system um and then and then other things can move into place you know it's one thing uh change the voting system and it opens doors things will happen there will be it'll be talked about about the lords some, something will happen about it but yes you're right here is the Labour Party is going to get in, looks like with a massive majority. And it's the likes of us, us. There are many other organisations campaigning for PRs as part of their stuff. There's Compass, there's Unlock Democracy, there's God knows who else, you know, loads of them. Um, but Make Verse Matter is just a single, single focus. And when, when the Labour Party get in, it's up to all of us to get out there and write to our MPs and write to Keir Starmer and make as much noise as possible. And here we are. Join Make Votes Matter. Go online to Make Votes Matter. Join. Doesn't cost anything. You can donate if you like to. Keep up to speed with what's going on, and be be part of Make Votes Matter. There are local groups around the country, like here in Tottenham. We've got a local group. We've got big big following. We do a lot of we do a lot about it. And to me, it is about raising awareness in the population because when it can push comes to shove, and we need the population to know what this is all about and the and the implications of first parts of the post and PR and what it can do. You know? So, yeah, and my my and and as we get into a Labour government, I mean, make those matter will change probably, and it will be massive input into into hitting the Labour Party big time as far as it can to do to do PR in the first term. Hopefully, they're going to come in and they're going to have a lot to do. The Labour government, they've got a lot on their plate, and PR is is quite a big one to to put through parliament but if they delay it to the second their second innings hopefully fingers crossed you know it might not happen and if we if it doesn't happen the tories get back the tories get back in again god help us all god help us all you know i'll be i'll be thinking about going abroad i think but yeah <laughs> i think a lot of people did that in the 90s laurie um absolutely fantastic Thanks. really really inspiring i was trying to write down some of the um Okay. Facts and figures, but I'll definitely uh, put, 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 get some of them typed in, put out. Thank you so much for your time, Laurie. That was really, really inspiring. You know, good, 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 good. A lot of our yeah. movements are talking about system change on banners and, and verbally, but deeds, not words. How do we actually change these systems? And people knock voting sometimes, say it doesn't change things, but unless we use the system we have there already to change it to a more fairer system and evolve many other systems and create parallel ones there. Any yeah. other groups? We're just, 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 just one thing: Tat tactical voting. People are understanding tactical voting now, and that is the big failure of first past the post. We've got South Devon primaries down here, legitimately, you know, organising tactical voting, and you know, the 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 the, the voting um, public are getting the, the swing of how to tactically vote, and we are likely at the next election not to have a Tory MP after a hundred years because of organised tactical voting. So I put Compass Online in there. I'm going to look up Unlock Democracy. And there is a couple of things in the chat that we put in on tactical voting. I think there's a climate vote this year where Greenpeace and other groups get together. You work out which is going to be the best vote for uh, for the climate in your area. Um, but thank you so much, Laura. If you want to send us any materials, we can put it out in the next newsletter um, updates next week. And really inspiring work. Keep at it. We, you know, we will all work together and we can change the system. But we need well, everyone. Mate,
maybe encourage your maybe encourage people to join Make Votes Matter. All the information I've been giving out, or well, most of it, is there anyway. You know, yeah. Brilliant. Well, if you want to, okay. if anyone wants to put a few words in the chat about what they thought uh, <clears throat> about tonight, put three words in. Uh, that would be lovely. And we're going to beam out. Um, we're actually going to switch the recorder off. And then if anyone wants to hang around for five, 10 minutes or more, 15 minutes to have a little chat, they can. I'm not democracy going in there in the chat. Thank you so much. I'm going to end the recording there for a second. And really, really so much useful information there. And I hope some of those facts and figures are absolutely shocking, Laurie, about, you know, the majority of people voting and, and who gets in and... Uh, we really need to pay attention and change the system. Be the change you wish to see. Thank you yeah. very much, Laurie. Uh, join Make Votes Matter and Make Votes Matter. Take care, folks. Stop the recording.